I'm Christy Bilbrey, and I am excited to walk you through part of Calendly's process today. This is really just going to be focused on clearing up confusion in setting your availability. So I'll show you a couple of other things, but I do also have a Calendly overview video. So if you are new to Calendly or you just want to find out what it's about to see if it's something that would help your business, then um, you can go ahead and click on that card or the link and check out that video. But for those of you who say, I need help figuring out how to set up my availability, this is for you. So first of all, I am just gonna show you if you, obviously I already have an account set up with them, but if you go into calendly.com, you can easily set up your account and a couple questions that I get asked a lot are, Calendly will automatically detect your local time zone. And the reason that people love Calendly so much is that you can avoid all of the back and forth emails with, what time are you available? Are you available this time on this day? Yes, no. Uh, what time zone are you in? Oh, how many hours different is that for me? You can avoid all of that because when you set up an account with Calendly, it will auto detect based on your IP address where you're located. I'm in Arizona. You really should never have to change that because even if you go somewhere else, you know, you it should detect that. If it doesn't, you can go ahead and go to the account settings in your account and then look at the bottom where it says time zone and you can make any changes that you need. Probably you'll never have to do that, but I am asked that question, so I hope that helps. Another question I get a lot is, how do I connect it to my calendar? Because the other point of this is that you want these events that people are gonna set up with you to automatically go to your calendar so you don't have to take the time to add them to your calendar yourself. So again, under this top menu, you are going to just go to calendar connections. And I already have mine connected to Google, but you would just click add calendar account here and you can see the calendars that it is set up to have you connect to. So if you don't have it set up, you can connect there. And uh, if you do, then I will also show you what's great is it is going to connect to that calendar and it will check for conflicts, which we're gonna get into more in a second, and it will automatically add any new events that someone schedules with you to your calendar so that it will show up as busy after that time. Okay. With that said, let's dive in to really the meat of today's focus, which is availability. So if you are new to Calendly, you will not have any event type set up, which is right here in the navigation tool. You can see event types. And uh, so what you would be prompted to do is create a new event type, which I'm going to do with you right now. And you have options here. There are some of you who may want to schedule calls with several people. Maybe it's a Zoom class and you want 10 people to be able to sign up for the same time. Great, you can do that. You can create an event type specifically for groups to let multiple people meet with you at the same time. Or if you're using it to meet with people one-to-one, -one, great, you pick one one-on-one, -on -one, and that way, if one person has signed up for that time, it will automatically show up as busy to anyone else who's looking to schedule time with you. So for today, I'm gonna click on one-on-one, -on -one, and you are gonna be asked to create a name. I'm gonna go through this part quickly because this isn't uh, really the point of the uh, tutorial today. So let's say you want it to be a Zoom call. And just real quick, if you're wondering, hey, how do I get it to, to connect to my Zoom? Well, you would click under integrations right here and Zoom is in direct integration and that you can easily connect to your Zoom account. And that way, anytime you set up a new event type that you want to be Zoom, you just go under location and it's gonna show Zoom as an option. You'll see there's other options as well. 
So I'm just going to leave it at that. You can also, if you want to add any instructions or description that shows up uh, when the person is scheduling right there, you can add that information. Then you can customize the link. You can call it whatever you want to call it. And if you are someone who loves to color code to organize each different type of event, you can do that. So then you're going to click next. And this is where we get into where I'm going to focus today. So this is how people can book with you. This is all about your availability. So you can set up a call or a video, you know, whatever it's going to be to be however long you want it to be 15, 30, 45, 60, or maybe you want it to be two hours. I don't know, maybe it's something long. So I'm just going to set this as 60 for this uh, test that I'm setting up with you guys. So this type of event that I am creating is something where I always want to meet with the person for 60 minutes. That's how long I want to schedule with them. The next thing you're going to see, events can be scheduled over 60 day calendars. So you can edit that. And here's what it means. It means that when someone wants to see when you're available um, so that they can choose the best time that works for them. How long do you want to show them? Do you want them to be able to only book for the next two weeks out? Do you want them to book for the next 60 days out? Do you want it to be business days only, Monday through Friday? Do you want it to be every day on the calendar? You get to choose that. And you also get to choose how many days. Do you want it to be 30 days? Do you want it to be 90 days? You have control over that. And that can be over a specific date range. That could be, they could see forever, like they could see 12 months from now and book something with you. Or you could say, no, I only want them to be able to see the next 30 business days or the next 30 calendar days and schedule that far in advance. Because if they book six months from now, what if I'm on vacation? What if whatever, you know, maybe you don't want them to be able to book that far in advance. So whenever you've decided how long down the road somebody can schedule time with you, you're just going to click apply. And I already showed you that the time zone for me is set in Arizona. And the great thing about Calendly is that when the person who is scheduling time with you, when they click on your link that you're going to make available to them, the time that they're going to see on the calendar, when they see the calendar, so your link is going to say, hey, pick any time that works for you, my availability is below. I mean, it doesn't say that, but essentially that's what's going on. So they are not going to see the times in your time zone. It is automatically going to populate in their local time. So that's what's great. You don't have to say, okay, I'm in Arizona, they're in Taiwan. What is the time difference? You don't have to worry about any of that. You can just say, hey, I'm available from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Arizona time. So whatever that is for your time zone, you just pick the time that works best for you within these constraints. Okay, so I know that might be a lot, but um, you guys are doing great. I'm going to keep going. So now what you can do is say, okay, I just want to be available on business days and I want to be available. Maybe it's not 9 to 5. Maybe it's like 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. Okay, so you click on the box and that's fine. You just change it and you say 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. And then you get to choose, does that only mean that you're available on those times for one specific day or every Monday? Well, I'm going to say every Monday. And here's something that I will let you know, because you have connected this to your online calendar, any time that you currently have booked already or busy, whether that's something that you have on your calendar, you know, for work, or maybe you say, well, I have my son's 
soccer game at 3 p.m. So on that day, I'm actually not available anytime after 2.30. As long as it's on your calendar that is connected with Calendly, it will show up as unavailable. So even though you're saying, okay, you can schedule any time between 2 p.m. and 7 p.m., it's actually only going to show the times for 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. that are not already booked. So if you have something booked, don't worry, nobody's going to be able to book that time because it will show up as busy. So then let's say that you never want to be available for this type of call on a Tuesday. Great. You just go to the I'm unavailable, click that button, and maybe that's every Tuesday. There you go. Now, no one will ever be able to book this type of event with you on a Tuesday. Now, you can come back and change this at any time, but I strongly recommend something that you can really set and forget for the most part. So just think about what are your typical office hours? When are you going to be available for these? And that is what I recommend that you put in here. And then just make sure if you do need to be busy and you don't want people scheduling for something that you've put it in your, you know, like mine is connected to my Google calendar. So if I block that time in my Google calendar, it will never show up as time that is available for people to book. So now I want to show you something that is often hidden. There's actually a few more things that you can choose with availability. So even though everything we've done so far is going straight down the line, the last place I'm going to take you is this advanced tab. So that is where you can find it. Click on advanced and you're going to see four more options. The first one is availability increments. So what does this mean? This means that if I uh, and you can make it whatever you want to make it, 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 45, or 60, right? So that means, do you want someone, do you typically set up your schedule so that you have appointments that start at, let's say, 10 a.m., and then you have something else at 10.30? A lot of people schedule meetings, calls, events on the half hour, uh, that means that somebody can't schedule something. They can't schedule a 30 minute or 60 minute event that starts at 9.15 or 10.15 because you want everything to either start at the top of the hour or at the half hour just to make life easy. Uh, maybe not. Maybe you want people to be able to schedule at any Time and that's not going to throw off your calendar. But if you're booking several things in a day, a lot of times you want it to be booked either the 15, 30, or 60 minute increments. So this allows you to do that so that you, nobody's going to schedule something at a random time and you're thinking, great, that's going to throw off my day. Well, you get to control that. The next one, and, and you know what? You do not need to do anything on this page. So don't feel like you have to do things on here. Uh, but you can if you want to. This next one is the event max per day. So what does that mean? Well, we're creating a specific type of event. This is a 60 minute call for me that I'm using in this test event type. So what if this event type is a really intense client session? And maybe you don't want to make it so that eight people can schedule that a day because your brain would explode and we don't want that to happen. So maybe this type of event, you say, oh my gosh, I can't do any more than three of these a day or five of these a day. If you have something where you say, oh, that's, that's a lot. I can only do this many per day. Great. Then you would just add that number in, whatever that is for you. You don't have to do this, but you can. Um, sometimes that can just help your sanity throughout the day. The next option it gives you is minimum scheduling notice. So this is great because let's say for whatever type of event you are setting up, maybe you need to do some preparation for that. So what if somebody gets your link 
and they schedule a call with you in an hour and you already have your day set up and you don't have time to real quick uh, get all the information you need and prepare for that call. So this gives you the ability to say, okay, you can, you can schedule this call, but you need to give me a certain amount of notice. Is that four hours? Is that 24 hours? How much notice do you want to have before somebody can schedule that type of call or event with you? Well, you have control over that. And then the last thing is event buffers. So this means, let's say you have an hour long call and then you have another hour long call right after that. Well, do you need time to prepare for the next call or do you need time to jot down your notes from the call that just finished? So this is great because this can give you buffer time before or after an event. So you can typically, um, you know, just enter these, let you do, I guess, up to three hours in different increments. So if you want to add that for whatever this type of event is that you're creating, you can do that. So those are just four different ways that you can really control when people can schedule with you. Because I know it can feel intimidating to let go of control of, well, if I give somebody this link, then can they just schedule with me anytime? No, it's still going to be very much determined by whatever constraints you add. And then you would click next and you've gone through all of the availability questions for setting up that event type on Calendly. Now, I know this can feel like a lot and I know there's a lot of other pieces that are involved. So if you are thinking, oh my gosh, I wish I could just have somebody help me do this and not have to go through all these questions myself, then you are more than welcome to click on my Calendly link below and schedule a free consult to see if you want my help to get you set up so that you can just start using your link and easing your time to focus on work instead of scheduling all these emails back and forth to try to figure out when somebody is going to be scheduled with you. So if you want to learn more about my help with that, you can click on that link. And if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for more marketing tech tutorials. Thanks so much for watching.